Press. This is a demonstration of Wirecast. Almighty God, who in your infinite wisdom and providential goodness have appointed the offices of leaders and parliaments for the welfare of society and the just government of humanity, we beseech you to look upon with your abundant favor these your servants whom you have been pleased to call to the performance of such important trust in this land. Let your blessing descend upon them this here as a demonstration and of Wirecast. They may, as in your presence, treat and consider whole matters that shall come under their deliberation in so just and faithful a manner as to promote your honor and glory and to advance the good of those whose interests you have committed to their charge. Amen. Amen. Item number two on the other paper, communication from the chair. This is a demonstration of wire cast. Honorable members, I welcome you to this uh, sitting. As you are aware, we had to adjourn to today to enable us to finish with the report from the sectoral committees so that the budget committee can now be freed to finalize its work. And I now advise that all chairpersons must now finish with the budget committee immediately after this. They should go finish with the budget committee this so that we are ready to finish with the of business of the budget uh, next week. So this sitting will only be examining those two issues. There is the one that remained yesterday, then we have a statement. And after that, we'll receive some document that was pending from the Minister of Finance. We'll just lay them on the table. Let's proceed. Item number three on the other paper. Motion for presentation, consideration, and adoption of the report of the Sectoral Committee on Legal and Parliamentary Affairs this is on the Ministerial Policy Statement and Budget Estimates for Financial Year 2017-2018. Honorable Chair, there is guidance on this issue. You deal with us, you deal with the figures, and then you highlight the most important thing in five minutes, and then we debate briefly. Is independent. Thank you, right, Honorable Speaker. This Being independent in this house gives me the opportunity to oscillate. <laughs> um, the in accordance with the rule 177 of the Rules of Procedure of Parliament, the Secretary Committee on Legal and Parliamentary Affairs examined and considered the ministerial policy statement of the Minister of Justice and Constitutional Affairs and of all the departments and agencies that fall thereunder, as well as that of the Parliamentary Commission for the Financial Year 2016-2017, and now we report to the House. For the record, would like to mention that we have about 10 institutional votes. Vote number 007, Ministry of Justice and Constitutional Affairs. Vote number 101, Judiciary. Vote number 102, cast. Electoral Commission. Vote number 103, Inspectorate of Government. Vote number 105, Uganda Law Reform Commission. Vote number 106, Uganda Human Rights Commission, vote number 109, Lord Development Center, vote number 119, Uganda Registration Services Bureau, and vote number 133, Directorate of Public Prosecution, and this finally, vote number 104, Wirecast. Parliamentary Commission. And uh, as directed, uh, that we give the summary. Right Honorable Speaker, it should be noted by this House that largely we, we deal with the jealous sector which has remained heavily underfunded for so many years 
and the underfunding has crippled the administration of justice in this country. Moreover, the budget structure for all institutions is crude towards consumption and limited investments are being undertaken using government resources. The committee recommends that the government lift the savings, several of which have remained stagnant for several years. This is a demonstration of speaker, Wirecast. The committee observed that the proposed sector is greatly affected by the several proposed bills not coming, which are still with the cabinet. Notable among them is the Judiciary Administration Bill. This is required to operationalize the mandate of the judiciary. The DPP Bill, this is a demonstration the Witness Protection Wirecast. Bill, the Law Revision Bill, the Legal Aid Policy Bill. The committee calls for expeditious tabling of this, the above bills and their enactment, because the enactment is critical for enhancing the sector's performance. And uh, we received the report from all the agencies on, on the implementation of the recommendation this of Parliament of to the report of Auditor General. The details are in our report, which should have been uploaded by now. And the committee recommends that the accountability committees clear the backlogs so as this provision can be satisfied next time. There was compliance of certificate of gender and equity. And uh, this is a demonstration of Wirecast. The committee recommends that the Equal Opportunities Commission clarifies the indicators for gender and equity responsiveness with respect to each of the institutional votes so that the institutions may ensure a high compliance level. Right, Honorable Speaker, we, we got a few challenges where some of the institutions do not know what their indicators are. And uh, on other areas, of on consistency of the budget with the National Budget Framework Paper and NDBI, the committee observed from the Certificate of Compliance that only four institutions, namely Judiciary, Uganda Law Reform Commission, Judicial Service Commission, and Uganda Human Rights Commission had draft plans that are aligned to the National Development Plan, but not yet approved. Uganda Registration Services Bureau had a working this draft a yet to be submitted to the NPA, National Planning Authority, for assessment of alignment to the NDP2. NDP2. Three institutions had no development plans and had not started developing their plans. These institutions include DPP, Ministry of Justice and Constitutional Affairs, and Law Development Center. The committee recommends that all votes should develop plans aligned to the national development plans. Uh, this is a demonstration of Wirecast. With your permission, I would go to vote by vote summary of key recommendations. Chair, I'd recommend that we go to page 18 of your executive summary, and then we see how to proceed after that. Much obliged. Page 18 of my executive summary. This is a demonstration of Wirecast. That makes it easy for me. Right, Honorable Speaker. Um, the committee, we have conclusions and recommendations on appropriations. The committee appeals to the various institutions in the jealous sector, to the 
to the jealous and to the Ministry of Finance, Planning and Economic Development to prioritize issues in the sector, particularly those that the committee has time and again identified as emerging priorities. This includes remuneration of enhancement of pay for the electoral commission, court award compensation to the Minister of Justice, among others. The committee concludes this is a with the recommendation the that cast. Parliament approves the budget estimates for 2017-2018 as here under. Vote 007, Minister of Justice and Constitutional Affairs. Recurrent 40 40 billion, 40091326 billion, development 30915278 billion, total 71006604 billion, vote 101, judiciary, recurrent budget, one. One two seven two three two four five development four zero six nine five zero zero total one one six seven nine two seven four five vote one zero two electoral commission recurrent six two six five zero 080 billion development 200 to 200 000 uh, total 6285080 vote number 105 Uganda Law Reform Commission 10 I beg your pardon, right honourable speaker. One zero six seven six four one eight, and uh, that's for the current. The development is two zero 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 zero, and the total ten eight seven six four three eight billion. Chair, the, the way you are ringing, it would be it this would be very confusing for the people who are cast. going to record from the hundred. If you could state in the billions and so that it is clearer. Okay. Thank you. All the figures in the total for the record are in billions. You are torch. And I will attempt to state where appropriate. Vote 106, Uganda Human Rights Commission. This is a demonstration of wire cash. 173835725 billion. Development 411797. And total gives us 17. Seven nine five three six nine billion. Vote number zero one one zero nine. Lord Development Centre. One one zero zero eight zero eight five billion as recurrent. And development one one four zero 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 billion. Total one six nine. One five nine nine five billion. Vote number one one nine. Uganda Registration Services Bureau. This is a demonstration. One five seven seven five nine nine five billion. The development budget one one four zero zero zero. I beg your pardon again. Development one. One four zero 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 billion, totaling one six. One 
1691599 billion for the record but Chair. right honorable speaker Chair, if you say 1 123 304 billion that is a lot of billions because the figure is only 1 billion Right Honourable Speaker, if it were not for the chartered accountant in the, in the name of Honourable Bahati, whispering here, I know these figures very well. I was doing well until it started confusing me. But for the record again, no, but this... The chairman, I would also earlier guide you. I said, why don't you state the billions and then go with the rest of the figure, the millions and the thousands, so that it is clear. Because if you say one, one, two, three, three, zero, four billion, then that is a lot of billions. Okay. I wish it was true this that all this would be billions. <laughs> These institutions really need more billions. <laughs> I think I was on... Uh, but these are figures which can be harmonized. Uh, we shall be gladly able to supply. Um, vote number 1133. One, one, Directorate of Public Prosecution. And that is 23 billion 573 million 832 thousand shillings. Yeah. For sure, every lawyer knows some bit of accounting. <laughs> And the development is six billion four hundred and fifty five million three hundred fifty one thousand. A uh, total uh, that's thirty billion twenty twenty nine million one hundred eighty three million thousand. Vote 148, Judicial Service Commission, is the recurrent is 3 billion 169 million 436 thousand. Development is, is 238 million 797 thousand. A total of 3 million. Three billion four hundred and eight million two hundred and thirty three thousand. Vote one zero three Inspectorate of Government is for recurrent is forty billion. This is a demonstration of why seven million nine hundred and twenty thousand. Development is five billion four hundred and five million four hundred and forty nine thousand, totaling forty five billion four hundred and thirteen million three hundred and sixty nine thousand. Vote one zero four parliamentary commission recurrent four hundred and sixteen billion. Seven hundred and fifty seven million twenty seven thousand. On development twenty four billion nine hundred ninety seven million four hundred and eighty one thousand, totaling four hundred and forty one billion seven hundred and fifty four. Million five hundred and eight thousand. Right Honorable Speaker, I beg to move for the adoption of this report. Thank you. Chair, you could help us with the issue of the Electoral Commission, the money that is there that is covered the local council elections, because that is what was on the House for the last two days. 
The also one election. This is a demonstration of Wirecast. Since the Minister of Finance is here, and uh, they've been the ones holding the pass. Did you meet the Electoral Commission? Did the Electoral Commission. Yes, did they say the money is there for the election of the No, government? they said they don't have money. In the budget? The money in the budget is provided for, is but it was not sufficient. Wirecast. And if I want to get it right, I may need my technical people. The Electoral Commission has been making requests to the minister seated here. Not once, many times. I can't remember the last final bit of it, but uh, we've been having a struggle. Is the 16 billion that was meant for the election, the election of LC1, is it in the budget? From it is, pro is, is as it's unfunded priority. Probably the Minister of Finance will bring it as a, a supplementary. It is not there. Honorable Minister, please. Let the minister help. <laughs> honorable Minister. Mr. Speaker and honorable colleagues, the, the chairperson of public service yesterday this said is a demonstration that the of wire cast. didn't have the money for this financial year, but government has provided close to 16 billion for LC1 elections for the financial year 2017-18. I thought this is the budget we are talking about. Yes. So the is budget, it there? This it is, is 20. It is there. That is what the chairman has just presented. Is the money there? Is the figures we have just read. Yes, the money is there in the, in the, in the budget for electoral commission. This is a demonstration of Wirecast. And, uh, as we'd be, we can get the exact item where the money is in a minute, and then we'll like to. Yes, Casillo. May I propose that the chairperson and minister of finance get out and reconcile this figure and come back to report on that? Because it looks like there is uncertainty where the money is. The minister, yesterday the, the chairperson of public service, local government, did tell us here the money is not there. Uh, today, the this minister, uh, the chairperson of Legal and Parliamentary Affairs has stated the money is not there, but he also added that I think he needs to consult with technical people. Before we approve the figures he has read, we want to be sure the money for election, for LC1 elections is included. So we give them time, like even the chairperson Legal and Parliamentary Affairs has requested that he needs to consult with technical people before chair, we adopt the figures. Minister and Chair, can you consult? Even I, the yeah. Minister of Justice is here. Please, the three of you should... I, I wanted to suggest that I can, because we have the book, we can, I can get out and get the figure. No, all of you should get out so that when we come, we are together. We yeah, don't also, want you coming back alone because, please, uh, the house just, Justice Chair and uh, Finance, consult with the technical people and confirm for us whether the money for local council elections is there in the budget. Please, just here. It won't take long. It should take about two minutes. Yes, members? Can I now propose this uh, motion for your debate? Please. This Honorable members, the motion that I now like to propose for your debate is for the adoption of the report of the Sectoral Committee on Legal and Parliamentary Affairs on the Ministerial Policy Statement and Budget Estimates for those sectors that are in this uh, sector for the financial year 2017-2018. That is the motion I propose for your debate. And let's have the debate now. Yes, Nyabusozi. Thank you, Rector right Speaker. Uh, I'd like to thank this the is a demonstration of wire committee cast. on this elaborate report. However, my concern, really, there are many concerns with this report, but I will concentrate on the case backlog. Right to Speaker and dear colleagues, the administration of justice in this country is a concern of everybody. And while I was trying to find out why there is an outcry, most of the judges where we tend to keep the, the, the faults,
I also complaining of Wirecast. that the investigative arm of the police is, is lacking in efficiency. They don't investigate sufficient enough in time to feed the DPP's office so the DPP can process uh, the cases. Therefore, uh, I would appeal to this parliament, and dear colleagues, we should try to give uh, maximum support. We should interest ourselves and maybe give maximum support to the police to develop this uh, investigative arm of the police because long ago we did have a special branch which has actually uh, either degenerated or collapsed. Uh, we should assist the police, right over speaker, to establish, re-establish a strong investigative arm that goes up to the village level, the whole country, so that we see a speed in this investigative arm, so that the cases are processed, and uh, instead of blaming the judges the for cases sometimes which are not counts. their responsibility. And right over speaker, finally, when you go further to deep, to, to investigate, you find that the, 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 the cost of maintaining prisoners in all these prisons is far, far big, far bigger, and most, more expensive to maintain these prisoners in these prisons rather than developing the investigative arm. That's another cost that we met in the budget committee that was presented by Ministry of Internal Affairs, and it's a big, big cost, but we don't seem to look at it, but it's a cost. Thank you, Rotary Speaker. Thank you. Kilak North. Mr. Speaker, it is unfortunate that uh, the chair of the committee is out of the house. My concern, number one, is about the salary of the judiciary, especially those at the lower rank, the magistrates. Of recent, we've this been informed that those at the higher rank, their cast. salary has been increased. I am not sure whether the, the lower, uh, the, the, the people at the magistrate courts and all those have been considered for increase of their salary. It is unfortunate that because of the major kind of payment, they are paying little uh, money, and it has been encouraging corruption in the country where citizens of Uganda have been suffering in the hands of judiciary. And I think it was important for this, this house to consider good payment for them, other than thinking about those at the Supreme Court or what only, so that they are taken care of. That is the first issue. The second issue I'm concerned about is also about the Electoral Commission. Right Honorable Speaker, these are people who determine how we come here. The kind of payment they are paid, especially those at lower rank, at the district level, they are subject to bribery because sometimes they do things that you've seen. The last elections, a lot of petitions have been coming on here and there. Uh, and that is important to make sure that those who determine our future of coming to this parliament should be given good pay so that they are not easily corrupted by some of us who have resources. And I thought this is something that was important to be considered before we pass the budget. Thank you. Yes, uh, Kyoga. Uh, thank you very much, uh, this Mr. Is Speaker. A demonstration of Wirecast. Mr. Speaker, my concern is about the lack of funds to organize and conduct elections in six districts that will be created with effect from 1st of July. We also have municipalities and town councils that will also take the effect. And the districts affected are Pakwach, Butebo, Rukiga, Namusindwa, Kyotera, and Bunyang, Bunyangabu. Uh, all these districts, this right honorable speaker, will take effect on the 1st cast. of July 2017. But it's also a requirement of the commission to the Commission to conduct elections of chairpersons and district women representatives within 60 days after the commencement date, and in addition to municipalities and town councils. But if you look through, you realize that this activity is an, is an unfunded priority. And yet it was known that from 1st July, 
This is this, a demonstration these administrative of units would come into effect. I don't know how we are going to proceed. I think we need some bit of clarification here. This is equally important, like the election of LC1 chairpersons, and, uh, and government has been aware. And I thought this is important for me to raise, right, Honorable Speaker. Thank you. Manjia. Uh, thank you, right, Honorable Speaker. I wanted to commence with the procedural matter. Because when I looked this at the list of demonstration of members wire that are signed, the number, Mr. Speaker, falls far short of the third that is required by our rules. And uh, it sets a very bad precedent. Mr. Speaker, I applaud the committee on the recommendation of uh, uh, Judicial Service Commission bring on board retired active judges because of the backlog of cases that we have as a This is a demonstration a country. of wire cast. And uh, this should have actually happened yesterday. But so far so good, if they could be brought on contractual basis, it would be better and the uh, judge-led cases would be much better than the current ones where litigant layers, uh, lawyers tend to, for selfish reasons, uh, prolong cases. Uh, Mr. Speaker, another one is uh, for this parliament, it pertains to the this parliamentary commission. Of wire cast. This parliament, which is uh, with the uh, additional administrative units, we are likely to go beyond 450 members of parliament, and the space is not conducive enough for effective legislation. It would require that this commission, therefore, prioritizes expansion of this uh, chamber so that uh, we have a conducive this is a uh, environment of for effective legislation. And also, Mr. Speaker, the inconvenience some of us go through going to those offices, even uh, you can't access internet in the offices that we have the other side. Uh, uh, while our, whereas our colleagues here have internet, so it's like others are more equal than others, animal farm in, at play. So, can so, we leave those for the administration of parliament to handle it? Administration of wire Oh, oh yes, uh, most obliged, uh, right honourable speaker. I beg to submit. Thank you, Mora Soroti. Yeah, I thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. I have two comments. Number one, I want to thank the committee for the job well done. But my concern, uh, Mr. Speaker, is on the, the issue is relating to Wirecast. I would call lack of development plans for three very important institutions. Uh, LODC has no development plan. We have Ministry of Justice, no development plan. We have DPPA, DPP, no development plan. I do not know how they are operating in this type, type of in this uh, in this type of environment. Because I know uh, a development plan will show you where you are going and what you are supposed to do. And that's one, one I needed to be clarified on this matter. Secondly, I also want to know or to be clarified. On the issue, when you look at the allocation here, uh, for example, electro electro commission, when you talk about the budget of development, they are talking about two hundred thousand. When you talk about uh, the Uganda Law Reform Commission, two hundred thousand, two hundred uh, two hundred thousand. You got the human rights, four hundred uh, four hundred eleven seven nine seven. I am wondering what the, what what this this money will actually do. I need to be clarified on this uh, matter, uh, Mr. Speaker. These are basically the few things that I want to say. Uh, then they finally, as I said, you know, I would actually request that, uh, like my colleague earlier said, the backlog in courts of law. This actually should actually be done and so that would say it. You know, it's not good to have so many people in, in prisons when they waste, when Arua. 
So many of them, uh, the, 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 uh, the prisoners could not even, could not even stay, stay, sleep. For them, some of them were just standing. And that's where the problem is. And if this backlog is addressed, I am sure uh, some of these challenges will actually be good. I want to thank you so much. Yes, uh, Isoroti. Thank you very much, Honorable uh, Speaker. Honorable Speaker, my concern is mainly this is a demonstration on the of issue wirecast. of land grabbing. Honorable Speaker and Honorable Colleagues, as you may be aware, this is a, one of the most I would say precarious circumstances the country is facing at the moment. And uh, we know that land is one of the key factors of production. But the rate at which cases relating to land, I imagine, is very alarming. Honorable Speaker, I wanted to find out cancer. from the Honorable Minister whether they have a special uh, arrangement in trying to make sure that cases related to land are expeditiously handled. Because as you may be aware, it is started uh, as a case mainly in urbanized areas, but now it is becoming a countrywide phenomenon. So I want to find out from the Minister of Justice this whether they have any the special arrangement to make sure that cases related to land I expeditiously handled. I thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you. Honorable members, let me correct the record. The Honorable Member for Manjia stated on the record that the number of people who have signed on the Legal and Parliamentary Affairs report does not constitute quorum. That is not correct. The total number of the members of the Legal and Parliamentary Affairs Commission are 24 people. Quorum is eight. Nine members this have signed. Is a demonstration so please of check your cast. record. And each time we want to bring things that bring the reputation of the House in challenge, please first cross check before you go on the record. It makes sense. The nine members who have signed, please confirm from your record that nine members have signed. Yes, Kwania. Thank you, Right Honourable Speaker. Right Honourable Speaker, my concern is on unfunded funded priorities in judiciary. This is a demonstration. Right of Honourable Speaker, cast. one of the issues that have not funds have not been provided for is strengthening the use of alternative dispute resolution. I, I really want to support the committee that government finds money about six billion so that the alternative dispute resolution system can be strengthened. We are talking about backlogs of cases that have not been sorted out. So many people are in prison with some cases that are related to land and yes, some of these other disputes. And if we could case. use alternative of resolution outside court, I think it would be saving ourselves a lot of cost more than this six billion. So it is my, uh, I'm really requesting that government should provide these funds. And another one which is also crucial is computerization and automation of court processes. Right, Honorable Speaker, there has always been complaints of case files being misplaced, disappearing. Even when the, the courts, uh, the cases are ruled, it takes so long for people to access the, the ruling of the court. So we think that if the system is computerized and automated, then it will be easy for us to manage our cases. Actually, the world is going IT, and it's only unfortunate that even in Uganda, the police, the file are managed manually. It gets lost even in court, the same thing. So I would think these are areas that government should consider and support so that we strengthen ju judiciary and then justice is given to our people. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Butabu? This is a demonstration of wire. Oh, this is Kiba. Yes, uh, Right Honorable Speaker. Now, the issue of concern I would like to raise is about uh, the position of the committee on a tribunal awards of the Human Rights Commission. Right, Honorable Speaker, when you look at uh, the Uganda Human Rights Commission, most of the time they have awarded complainants 
this is some a compensation of wirecast but to date this have not been fulfilled and it is the observation of the committee that there was a presidential pledge actually to offset this award this is standing at over 5 billion according to the report of the committee and our people down there have suffered in various ways some were tortured and to date over 10 years have been taken to investigate some of their cases but up to now even after the awards they have never received this any form of compensation of wirecast. for which i wanted to, to to suggest to propose that minister of finance goes back and see how to review this issue so that these people can at least be awarded the compensation which the commission was able to consider thank you very much Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, sir. This is a demonstration of the speaker, cast. sir. Allow me, on behalf of the Muslim Parliamentary Caucus and on my behalf, to wish you a peaceful and fruitful, fruitful holy month of Ramadan and even all members of parliament. We are beginning sure. tomorrow, and as the Imam, I wish you and all Ugandans a very fruitful and peaceful on Mark of Ramadan, inshallah. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, having said that, this vote is 102 Electoral Commission. E, the location of Commission headquarters. Mr. Speaker, sir, in the report they have indicated that we need to raise funds for the relocation of Commission headquarters due to the eastern route of standard gauge railway. Mr. Speaker, sir, I wanted to know this is a demonstration of from the chairperson of the committee. We have had electoral commission. Last year, they advertised. They wanted to get a fully built house. And the adverts were run last year. Down the road at the beginning of this year, all applicants submit, submitted and were cancelled. And we are informed, uh, I want to be educated, that is, there is some money, good money, which has been allocated squarely for that. This year, Mr. Speaker, they have re-advertised and the process is almost complete. So, if we, because they need a fully built house and they are there, no, what will be the purpose of this money when actually they are going to locate to a house which is going to be bought shortly? That is the question I wanted to, to get, either from the minister, how far is the process? And won't it be a waste of resources to temporarily, because this means we are going to temporarily rent somewhere and yet the procurement process and everything has been done and the houses are there which they are going to buy. Kassilo. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, <coughs> let me take on from where the Imam has ended the issue of the relocation of uh, the electoral commission offices. This the reasons being given here, Mr. Cast. Speaker, are that it will pave way for the standard gauge railway. Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues, sometime the beginning of this year, I did raise an issue regarding uh, the railway line on the 7th Street, where some people in the government have decided to allocate to an investor to build a mall. Now you can see where they are adding, taking us to. Up to today, this is a government has not come to give us a response. Who located that part of the railway line in Industrial on 7th Street to, to an investor to build a mall? Now we are being pushed to relocate electoral commission, release money to it, unless, until government comes to explain to us who did that and for what reasons. These are the people who go behind the things. Now this money could be meant for some of them. That's why they gave out the railway line from the industrial area. So I will not be party to that. 
allocation of the money this in order to shift electoral commission in order to pave way for the standard gauge railway unless that is answered to this house mr speaker the issue of compensation you know these people who lost their properties i can talk for the acholi region the lango region the teso the west nile of course there are those who have won the cases but the money is not provided for why can't government provide even on an annual basis a percentage such that each beneficiary gets something out of this and i think it's something that co colleagues we need to push for the issue of the backlog of cases is another matter that needs to be addressed i did raise again the other day here that there's a case on behalf of the people of teso which is as old as me in this parliament it's not coming to an end 17 years down the road attorney general you have come out gone in in that office this is a demonstration of can you see to it that these cases are concluded can you provide money to these cases because in most cases some cases you end up losing because your office is not represented and it ends up judgment put against you so please can money be found to handle these cases the issue of the electoral commission i want us colleagues here if the money is not provided for lc1 election i don't want us to behave like one time in venezuela this where they took 18 years for the local council elections to be done for us we are almost approaching there let this be the last can we put our feet down that the money must be provided for lc1 elections in the next financial year Uh, finally, which, which the admission of parliament can take on is the, when we were meeting as the Committee of Fiscal Infrastructure, we did raise the issue about Minister of Lands and Prisons moving as, as has been put this to them. But the Minister of Lands, Honorable Betty Among, I said for them they are ready to move, they are ready to move out, but uh, they have written to, to us, but we have not communicated back. For them they are ready to move. The Minister of Lands. So can the Electoral Commission, uh, Parliamentary Commission take up this matter? Because that's what we got from the, the Committee of Fiscal Infrastructure. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Busongora? No? This is a demonstration Thank you, of Right Honorable passed. Speaker. Right Honorable Speaker, this Parliament, the 10th Parliament, has delayed to amend the rules the procedure of the 10th parliament and uh, you will recall right honorable speaker that uh, members in the debates this during the 9th parliament of wire cast. were of the view that all committees of parliament must be open and you know free for all members to attend the proceedings of those meetings and uh, it would have been prudent right honorable speaker for us to have this as a priority so that even this is a demonstration of the appointments wireless. committee right honorable speaker can be open to all members because somewhere we have had some a lot of reservations on some of the issues there and because we are not members we don't have an avenue to express ourselves and particularly right honorable speaker on uh, on uh, the view that uh, even a report of this is Such a committee of cannot cast. be debated here. Would it be fair, therefore, right honourable speaker, that again we get to maybe 2018 before we can have an amendment of our rules, so that also such committees and all committees of parliament become open, and the reports should be debated here in the interest of Ugandans. 
the report of the Committee on Rules is on business to follow, so it's just waiting a day for debate. This is a demonstration CPDF. of Wirecast. Uh, thank you, Right Honourable Speaker and members. Uh, my observation, Right Honourable Speaker, on, is on uh, the criminal prosecutions in light of uh, sexual, uh, gender-based violence and children-related cases, they are reporting a funding up this of is a demonstration of wirecast. Eight to zero billion shillings, and I, 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 I thought that actually this uh, this is a bit alarming because where children uh, they are saying under the criminal prosecutions that 60 percent of cases are related to gender-based violence and are children, and you know what when it comes to uh, children being abused, sexual offences. So, if they have a funding gap of that magnitude, you can see what it's going to mean to the justice of our children. So, my prayer would be that actually this this, is this a demonstration gap of wirecast. be closed, because this concerns all, all of us. The other time, when Lira, we were told that there are a lot of uh, cases to do with children not being protected, they have nowhere to put them when they are gotten. They have, sometimes they have nothing, they don't know how to, to do with them. They keep them in their offices. That's what the police, the DPC was saying, that sometimes they are forced to keep them in their offices because they are not supposed to be kept with adults. So there are a lot of issues around children. So my humble request or my prayer is that this gap be filled. This is a demonstration uh, the other of wire The right speaker is about uh, corruption. This report is a bit silent about corruption in this country and how it's going to be handled. And that means that even this ministerial policy statement could have also been silent. We all know how this country is awash, awash with cases of corruption. The most recent being the, the, the fake compensations. So where the ministry keeps silent about this? I think this house needs to be told how it intends to actually address issues of this deliberate corruption of stealing cast. or depriving this country. Right Honourable Speaker, I beg to submit. Thank you. Uh, Bulu? Uh, thank you, Mad uh, Mr. Speaker. I want to thank the committee for the report. But uh, I would like to ask the state, uh, the attorney general, of about these state attorneys. They are confusing the public wherever they are. And they solicit for bribes. While we are complaining about the backlog, Honorable, in the, are there allegations that they solicit the allegations, for bribes? Okay. The allegations. Okay. Yes, the allegations, while we are condemning the, the, the judiciary for the backlog, this also is caused this by the state attorneys, wherever they are. Because they are the ones holding the cases. When you ask the magistrate, the magistrate says it's not my fault, it is the state attorney. So in the confusion, I think state uh, attorney general should come in and sensitize his people. So that the, I mean the, 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 the differences between the magistrates and the state attorney can be outlined and we know who is who. This the allegations that they ask for bribes list. and if you don't pay bribe, a bribe, then your case will not go to court. So can we know what is going on? Uh, my, uh, right Honorable Speaker, I'm also wondering as to who is displacing electoral commission. They said it's standard gauge rally. Then we hear rumors the land is being allocated to a developer. And recently, uh, the executive director for, the, for KCCA was on radio this saying that uh, they are displacing uh, electoral commission because they are going to widen. Uh, the, it is for the uh, uh, flyovers. Now, who is displacing the electoral commission? Please. Uh, thank you, member, for giving way. Mr. Uh, Mr. Speaker, 
I, I happen to participate in the three projects, this which is are a demonstration part of, of the five cast. flagship projects for the congesting KCCA. I mean the Kampara and the Greater Kampara. And these are standard gauge railway, which has got a passenger component. Flyovers funded by JICA. Then Ginger Express Highway with a component of Southern Bypass. So the three this actually they converge at that cost. very point itself. There is a very huge interchange at that place and they are taking the whole land of the whole of that place. Finally, before I left, we harmonized all these three projects. That's why they are mentioned as three projects taking over electro condition. Thank you. You had finished? Uh, uh, right, Honorable Speaker, I think that is my submission. Thank you very much. Yes, Can we close? of Wirecast. Bukonjo West, briefly, please. You are not in my budget of time because you did not rise early. Please, so please. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker, and welcome back. We've been missing you in the house. Um, uh, Mr. Speaker, mine is about the criminal justice system in our country. Mr. Speaker, sir, this is a demonstration. You are fully aware that. Criminal proceedings take four forms. First of all, identification. Number two, investigation. Number three, prosecution. And number four, adjudication. You're aware, Mr. Speaker, that the police is supposed to sanction criminal proceedings. But we have a lacuna or a predicament in our country where the same people that are support to sanction criminal proceedings are part of the problem. A case in point, Mr. Speaker, was when the IGP was summoned. And then here you have a DPP telling the country that it's taken over. And Mr. Speaker, sir, I think this is something that permanently dents our country, especially people that is want to seek justice and see justice taking its full course unfolding. And I would interest and encourage the committee to take particular interest in trying to harmonize or trying to dissect the intersection between the people that are supposed to sanction criminal proceedings are the people that are supposed to execute uh, the criminal justice system of our country. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. I will have the, I think the Attorney General will go first, then finance, and then I have the chair, then we conclude. Uh, thank you, Mr. Attorney Speaker. By the time I entered, and I have to uh, apologize for coming late. We are engaged in a very this uh, is a demonstration of wirecast signing the agreements for the pipeline. All of us were there, and I had to rush when I knew when I heard that we were on the floor. So I apologize for coming late. By the time I entered, a member was raising an issue on whether there are special arrangements to handle land matters. I want to say this yes. This is a demonstration of wirecast. As, as you may know, the High Court is divided into divisions. There is a land division. What we are trying to do is to decentralize the high court as much as possible. Resources available to make sure that in all regions, 
in all uh, jurisdiction, uh, jurisdiction, uh, jurisdiction in, in all regions. Uh, this is a demonstration this, of Wirecast. Uh, uh, um, compatibilization is available. Once we do that and we get divisions at every region, and at every region there is a division to handle land matters, we think that would be a right step towards ensuring that this is land a demonstration cases of Wirecast and uh, quickly resolved. Then uh, there was an issue of computerization of court records. I want to say the process has started. It is ongoing. It takes some bit of time, but we have started on it. And uh, soon, uh, this court processes of will be computerized so that the issues raised by the honorary member will be addressed. Now, on compensation for human rights awards, I want to assure honorary members... Human Rights Commission award. Uh, human Rights Commission awards. I want to assure honorary members that compensation for human rights commission this is a demonstration take first of priority. Yes, they do. Before we consider any court awards, we first deal with Human Rights Commission awards because we appreciate the importance of addressing, uh, redressing those people against whose rights have been trampled upon. But sometimes, this is a demonstration as may of Wirecast. Know, the resources are not adequate to cover all the awards. But within the available resources, we give Human Rights Commission awards first priority before we consider other court awards. Uh, standard graduate, that one has been answered. This is a demonstration of Wirecast. Honorable Mutoni raised a concern about state attorneys soliciting for bribes and as a result delaying the determination of criminal cases. Well, it is true that in some cases there are those issues this of is a demonstration of wire corruption cast. and bribery. But you know, as a country, we have been grappling with that issue, and uh, we encourage everybody, the public, one of members, where there is evidence of any judicial officer or state attorney soliciting or receiving or giving a bribe. Then, this is the relevant organ should be Wirecast. immediately informed and uh, the due process should take place. Having said that, I must uh, state that over the time, issues of uh, that kind of corruption have gradually reduced, though they still are there. We have to work together to ensure that uh, we root out that vice once and for all. This is a demonstration of Wirecast. And it is true, I agree, that uh, when uh, there is that solicitation for bribes and the uh, state attorney may not, may not present a file, that would delay. Remember what is what is the matter? Yes, the matter is Honorable Rukutana is uh, right, Honorable Speaker. Thank you. 
the on, point on what, of order. On what matter do you rise? Yeah, I rose on a point of order. This okay. is a demonstration of wire cast. Right Honorable Speaker, you called us here for this sitting to start at 11 because we are really trying to catch up with time. But Right Honorable Speaker, Honorable Rukhtana is speaking as if he has no energy, he's speaking, and, and, and people who are in the corners are not hearing him very well. <laughs> is it in order, right, Honorable Speaker, for us to, and there is no confidence in what he's talking. Is it in, he's just talking casually. Is it in order, right, Honorable Speaker, for us to commit our time to come here today, and, and you know, right, Honorable Speaker, that today we are not even supposed to be sitting, but we came because of your direction, is it in order for Honorable Rukhtana to really give us no morale in this house, <laughs> to just stay here and, and, and he's speaking without even a lot of, a lot of, uh, I mean, a lot of what he's saying and the meaning, he's not even giving it a meaning actually, right now, the speaker. Honorable members, as to the Ill energy of the Honorable Minister, I am not sure what he was doing last night <laughs> or this morning. I don't know where he's from, so I cannot blame him for having no energy this moment. But he's trying, so please try better, Honorable Minister. Try harder. Uh, right on the speaker, let me put some morale. I want to assure honorable members that the issue of solicitation for bribes by state attorneys is being handled. Thank you. Honorable Minister of Finance. Uh, Mr. Speaker and honorable colleagues, you directed a few minutes ago to go out and we will consult with the chairperson of the committee and the minister. Uh, and, this, and the Deputy Attorney General to whether we provided uh, funds for LC1 elections. This is to confirm that uh, we did provide 15 million 600, 15 billion 960 million 151 thousand under vote 102. So we, we are very confident that elections will take place sooner than later. Chair? Right, Honorable Speaker, it was good that you gave us a few minutes to go and reconcile. And the reconciliation, I'm happy to report this that has taken place. That finally Ugandans will be able to vote for the LC1 and the LC2 in the next financial year. And, uh, and, uh, and the Women Council too. Um, we want to thank the Minister of Finance and the government uh, for, for the the indulgence. We, I got some, actually, matter on, on corruption from the UPDF. Demonstration of Wirecast. The, when you refer to our page of the main report, page 39, we is ably covered there. Maybe not as pronounced, you know, prominently. But uh, there's need to train staff, the current staff in IGG. The corruption trends are now getting out of the ordinary, and this they've made a case for more funding. Wirecast. And uh, thank you, Honorable Biabagambi, for institutional memory about the relocation. I believe Hajj, Ali Hajj, the Imam, Honorable Sebagala, is comforted with the uh, with the case backlog right honorable speaker permit me 
the state attorney's automation will help a lot. This is a demonstration And if of we wire provided tanks. money for the administration of justice, to the judiciary, the DPP, we would be able to fast track. But on case backlog, the judiciary made an appeal for more judges. We give money in this parliament to the police for investigation, which sometimes is not done properly, and we congest our prisons. The this government of Uganda of spends a lot of money feeding the remandees in Luzira. But we can't find money to get judges and state attorneys to prosecute matters. We need to harmonize and see what matters first. Is it feeding prisoners in these remand homes or in prisons, or we should have judges so that they can dispense of these matters, uh, cases quickly? And uh, I believe that the Minister of Finance and it should be on record here. Honorable Bahati, I should report and I want you to be on record. This sector administers justice. You cannot boast about good infrastructure development. You cannot boast about anything in this country when you ignore this, this is a sector. Demonstration of wire those who move on those roads, those who transact business or invest in this country, need the administration of justice. And the investors, they need this assurance. This parliament, we are members of parliament because we were elected. Those who conduct our elections for the last 19 years, 18 years, they have never had morale to do. A little this wonder, several members here cast. are on the edge. Just yesterday, we lost two at Court of Appeal. We are leading the officials of the Electoral Commission into temptation every day. When they have to say the Lord's Prayer, they are very emphatic when it gets to, <laughs> don't lead us into temptation. This parliament can and the government can provide for the additional 37 billion they need to enhance this the salary in a phased manner. 50%, 30, and then 20, in three finance year. And uh, Mr. Speaker, I needed the Minister of Finance to be on record because we harmonized. We did not want to ambush government. We met with the Prime Minister and uh, this money can be good. And beginning the next financial year. And uh, demonstration of wire Honorable Speaker, the other procedure thing I had not done is at this point as I leave the podium and you're probably directing the Minister of Finance to come, I lay on the table, the proceedings, the minutes of the proceedings of our meetings, and the copy of the report. Let Thank the, you very much for all the support, honorable members. Let the records capture that. There was a pending matter from yes. Kawempe. Can you restate it? Wirecast. Thank you, right, honorable speaker. I was talking about the relocation of the headquarters, and yet we know that the procurement of new offices for the EC is almost completed. Won't that be double expenses? That we give them money to relocate and yet they're going to get their new home as a little commission. So I wanted to know whether the money for the relocation is already there and whether they cannot wait until they finally settle in their new home because it is already, it's almost at the final stage. I thought that was answered. Because the issue of relocation is there. It is going to be relocated for various reasons. But now he's saying the EC is already procuring. So I think there's no... Is there anything that is still remaining there? 
I think what Honorable Native is talking about, money was provided for. That's why the procurement cast. took place. So why are we budgeting again for in the next financial year? That's the clarification we need to get from them. Okay. Of course, the whole thing takes a process also. It's not done today and it is done. So there should be some stop uh, action taken in the period. Can somebody deal with this issue, please? Yes, yes, yes. No, I'm not electrocut. <laughs> <laughs> but also in the Karamoja, there are elections there. But uh, Mr. Speaker, as much as I would have loved to see electoral commission with their building, a new home, but this home takes time to construct. And, and the home usually... You see, you see, please, let's not make this a big issue. Even when you get a building, you still have to configure it to, you, to what you need. There must be a stop. You see, it's still a process. Even if you buy a building today and you want it for your purposes, they have to re re remodel it to fit your circumstances. So it's not a one-day thing. Right, Honorable Speaker. The specifications in, in, the, uh, in the bid documents were very clear. They need a fully furnished house. And it's already there. The bid has already submitted. So it's just a matter of paying and even relocate. That's what we want from, from the Attorney General and from the Minister of Finance. Because the money is already there. And they have done it twice. Yes? Right, Honorable Speaker, I remember something similar came up during our committee. No, but no, no. This, this matter, please. Yes. This matter only. Yes. Let's deal with it. Yes. That very question arose. And the explanation we got was that the Electoral Commission it's not a mere, uh, we are, they are not looking at offices for computer space and whatnot. They have a lot of equipment, of they have printeries, they have lots of machines, and they, they require storage and whatnot, and that cannot be housed in one office block. Yes, so it's a big thing. Okay. Can I now put the question and deal with these matters? Mr. Speaker, I'm not convinced with that the colleague is talking about. Because, Mr. Speaker, when the big documents were sent out, this is a what, has, what the, the, the Electoral Commission wanted was a spacious and a complete building which can house with even a parking of 400 vehicles over. So everything has been said. There is something that they don't want to tell us. Everything is set and the house is already there. Honorable members, I put the question to the approval of the report of the Committee of Legal and Parliamentary Affairs on the Ministerial Policy Statement for the Budget Estimate for Financial Year 2017-2018. I put the question with those in favor to the contrary. No. The eyes have it. Next item. Item number four on the other paper. Statement by the Parliamentary Network on the World Bank on the World Bank Day, 30th May 2017. Honorable Cooper. This is a demonstration of Wirecast. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues. This is a statement by the Parliamentary Network on the World Bank to Parliament of Uganda about the, the World Bank Day, 27th May. 2017. Maybe just to give you a big background this about the, the parliamentary network. Cast. This parliamentary network was found, founded in the year 2000. The parliamentary network is an independent, non-governmental organization that provides a, a platform for parliamentarians from over 140 countries to advocate for increased accountability and transparency in development cooperation. The network provides a platform for, me, for MPs civil society to hold to account their own government as well as international financial institutions 
for development outcomes. The network reaches over 1,000 parliamentarians in Africa, Asia, Europe, the Americas. It strives to increase transparency and accountability in the development cooperation process by fostering the oversight role of parliaments and civil society with a specific focus on multinational aid and a sub-focus on the work and modus operandi of the World Bank Group and the International Monetary Fund, the world's largest multilateral funders. Other partners include organizations like the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, Inter-American Development Bank, African Development Bank, DFID of United Kingdom, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the Netherlands Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Finland 2000-2010, the French Agency for International Development, the German Marshall Fund of the United States, the Interparliamentary Union, NATO Parliamentary Assembly, and their WEPA. The Parliamentary Network's mission is to provide a platform for parliamentarians around the globe to advocate for increased accountability and transparency in international financial institutions and multilateral development fi financing. Today, the purpose of the network is fourfold. To strengthen the understanding of the work of the World Bank Group and International Monetary Fund among parliamentarians. To provide a channel for parliamentarians to inform the World Bank and IMF of legislative priorities on behalf of their constituents to ensure that the voice of parliamentarians is heard on the subjects in which the World Bank Group this and IMF have a key role, podcast. to conduct research, to share information among members on topics which are of international concern and interest. Another of the work foci of the parliamentary network is also to bring together parliamentarians, representatives of the private sector, as well as the donor countries to discuss how to improve the environment for doing business in the developing world and how countries can improve their ranking in international evaluations. A parliamentary network chapter brings together a group of parliamentarians who are committed to the network's mission and principles. Chapters can be national or regional and can help to strengthen the position of parliamentarians among the development stakeholders. The parliamentary network chapters facilitate regular interaction between local parliamentarians and the staff in the World Bank and IMF country offices, including consultations on country assistance strategies, public expenditure reviews, and World Bank policies and individual projects. In developing countries, this level of engagement has proven valuable in improving this country ownership and involvement in the poverty reduction process. The parliamentary network is governed by a board of directors currently composed of 10 members who are elected on a two-year term. Members, the current board which was elected this year at the parliamentary network's global parliamentary conference which was held in Washington, D.C. includes 10 members from the countries of Africa, South Af Europe, South America, North America, and Asia. I want to thank the colleagues who participated, who represented this parliament, Honorable Nambeshe, Honorable Akol, Honorable Puga, Honorable Sechkubo, and Honorable Nandala. They went further to help us with, together with the Ministry of Finance officials to negotiate for the reinstatement of the World Bank funding to Uganda. And I think we need to congratulate them. On our, in that conference, our own colleague, Honorable Nandala Mafabi, was elected to the member of the board. He's, also, he's one of the ten members of the board of directors. So Uganda should be proud of these members of parliament. This is a demonstration of wire The Ugandan case. chapter of the Parliamentary Network on World Bank was launched in 2006. Past chairpersons included Honorable Henry Banyansaki, Honorable Nathan Nabeta, Honorable Godfrey Kanya. I'm currently the sitting chairperson, Honorable colleagues. Current membership comprises of 22 members and we encourage more members to join and subscribe. A half day workshop to brief members of parliament on the activities of the parliamentary network on the World Bank is and a briefing by the World Bank and IMF West. and other development partners on the roles they play in Uganda is slated for 29th June. The venue will be communicated to you later. Honorable colleagues, the World Bank Open Day, the World Bank Group in partnership with the government of Uganda are holding an open day and this is the first of its kind and the event is called the Partnering for Development. It will take place on the 30th of May at Kololo Independence Grounds, starting at 8 a.m. until going for the whole day up to 5 p.m. 
the chief guest will be the Minister of Finance and Economic yes. Development, Honorable Marcias Kasaija. So, honorable colleagues, you are invited. The cards have already been distributed to your pigeon holes. You are invited to take time and join. The objective of this open day, honorable colleagues, is to enable the public learn more about the benefits and the impact of the bank-funded projects, create a platform to interact and obtain direct feedback from the public, share knowledge and information generated by the World Bank Group and the government of Uganda. This is a demonstration. The Parliamentary Network of Uganda chapter shall take part in the exhibition and calls upon members to take time to join in the ceremony and panel discussion. Fifty other government agencies will take part in this event. There will be a panel discussion on the role of parliaments in, in, in approving loans between 9 and 11 a.m. I will represent, I will be part of those representing you, Honorable Mukhtale and the former chairpersons of the network, Honorable Kanya and Honorable Banyasaki, together with our Honorable Nandala, the board member. It will be live on TV, so stay tuned. The World Bank Group program in Uganda is guided by a new country partnership agreement, that is the CPF, which was discussed and supported by the board on the 21st of April 2016 and is closely aligned to the National Development Plan. In line with the CPF and responding to government demand, the bank's focus now is on agricultural productivity, urban development, social service delivery, and economic governance and fiscal management. For the included in the financial year 2017 is proposed projects supporting intergovernmental fiscal transfer system and social development. In the first year of the financial year 18, the year of the idea 18, is proposed the proposed support for the use is proposed that there will be support for the youth employment, governance, and public sector performance, statistical capacity municipal infrastructure development, and water and sanitation. The current commitment by the World Bank Group to Uganda this is, is about 2.63 billion US dollars in credits and grants, of which 1.8 billion US dollars is currently undisbursed as of February 2017. And this is where we call the government. We pass the loans here, but you can't imagine out of the 2.6, 1.8 billion US dollars has not been dispersed. This is why we must uh, hold the Minister of Finance accountable because we continue paying for this money, yet we, we passed it. The main problem here is the government has not provided the counterpart funding. And it's good this is happening during the budget time. We need to push government to provide the money for government funding. Otherwise, this money is going to remain redundant and it covers a number of areas of the projects. We have about... I, I will not be able to read this. I will just lay on the table. It's a list of projects here for the last five years and those which are coming or which are in the pipeline. There are over 30. So members will have a look at it. But when we have a discussion at the seminar or the workshop, we shall be able to explain to you. This is a demonstration of... More projects coming up in various sectors such as energy, health and education are in the pipeline. The country portfolio challenges, however, which included delayed parliamentary approval for funding, delays in implementation of approved projects, among others. One outstanding project here in Parliament is on the refugee host communities that is still pending approval. Right, Honorable Speaker, this budget, this, this loan is with our Committee of National Economy. This budget is meant to provide for money to the host communities where the refugees are hosted. Because it's very unfair to see the refugees being provided with better facilities Yet the host communities cannot access those facilities. So there is urgency for us to pass the Committee of National Economy to move faster and approve this. They had expected that this loan could be approved before the end of the financial year. And since we are still within, I want to call upon the Committee of National Economy to move faster such that we are able to approve this committee, such that the, the host committee, communities in Masindi, in West Nile, in Lango, hosting the refugees, can be able to also to benefit from this. Honorable members of parliament can be involved in this work in a number of ways. It's very important to know that MPs understand the steps, the processes for financing for any project. Members of parliament need to be in the know about the process the right, right from the stage of initiating financing. Most times the MPs are involved at the approval stage without background information. 
which has in many cases delayed the approval and disbursement. This is what the network is meant to provide to honorable colleagues. They must also participate in the review of country assistance strategy to stay informed of any adjustments. Members of parliaments also need to be involved in the monitoring and provide oversight roles for active projects to encourage, encourage compliance such that we don't go back to the problem we faced with the World Bank withdrawing funds that stopped the work on the road on the Kamwenge Fort Porto Road and a number of other projects. Honorable colleagues, right honorable speaker, once again I want to call on members to come and participate in this World Bank Open Day in Kololo Independence Grounds on Tuesday, 30th May 2017. As stated earlier, invitation cards have been delivered to your pigeon halls. Right honorable colleagues, honorable members, thanks very much for God and my country. May God bless you. Thank you, honorable colleagues. Thank you very, very much, honorable member, but it clashes with our program for Tuesday. We have a challenge with the time because we'll be sitting both in the morning and afternoon, so we don't know how this will be harmonized. This honorable members, we still have a challenge with how to cast. handle statements of this nature, and that's why the gaps in the rules might have to be supplied soon because this is neither a personal statement nor is it a statement of personal explanation. And uh, we're trying to find avenues within the rules to accommodate such uh, a statement. But at the top of the hour, please. At the top of the hour, I need to know, you need to know that today is Friday and the Imam has just alerted me that there are matters that they have to deal with in relation to this the higher powers of, uh, of human beings. So for that matter, I'm going to ask the Minister of Finance to lay some documents that were re uh, requested for on uh, Wednesday. The government negotiating team, the list of the government negotiating team on the Bujagari uh, power issue and also the agreement. It was requested that it should be laid. I think it should be laid. And then there's a short statement that the minister has to make in relation to the negotiation that has been going on in relation to the salary and other things of the electoral this commission is a officers. Of wire minister, cast. Then we conclude. Mr. Speaker and honorable colleagues, on the issue of electoral commission, it is true we have had. Uh, meetings with the Prime Minister of the Republic of Uganda and the chairperson of the uh, Parliamentary and Legal Affairs or, and other stakeholders. We agree in principle that the issues in the judiciary general sector of must be attended to and we are making them a priority to handle them in a comprehensive manner for the financial year 18-19. And uh, but there are a, a few urgent issues that we must attend to, and we agree that we will be working with the Committee of Budget to see how much ground we can cover uh, in the circumstances we are in. Thank you, honorable members and chairpersons and members of the Budget Committee. Please, you now this need to work around the clock. Use this time and the weekend to try and see that we finish these processes so that uh, by next week we are ready to move. I'm informed that by Monday there will be no business because the budget committee will be finalizing its report. So this house will be adjourned up to Tuesday. And Tuesday we need to start in the morning. We start on Tuesday at 10 o'clock. Is that okay, honorable members? Have you laid okay. the documents? No, um, yeah. This is a demonstration of wire Mr. Cast. Speaker. The House, the, the Chair requested me to lay a list of the negotiating team for Bujagali uh, limit, Hydropower Limited and also the agreements and I would like to, to lay them for the record of Parliament. Let the records capture that. Let the records capture that. Honourable Members, that matter was concluded, the debate was finished, the law was passed. This house is adjourned to Tuesday, 10 o'clock. This is a demonstration of wire cast.
This is a demonstration of Wirecast. This is a demonstration of Wirecast. This is a demonstration of Wirecast.